Hello and welcome to this week's angling vlog. Today you join me on the bank and we're in search of pike. We're towards the end of the session now and we've had quite a few pike on the bank but it's been far from plain sailing. Um, as the blog will show in a minute it's amazing in fishing how little slight changes can make such a difference. So what we'll do we'll go back to midday and we'll pick up the blog from there. One tip that goes across all forms of fishing, whether that's stick float fishing, um, pike fishing, carp fishing, you've got to be on the fish. And when I'm not fishing, I'm generally putting the time in trying to find where the quarry is that I want to catch at the weekend. This week I was walking along the canal and I've seen quite a few fish topping um, just on just on the you know, on the edge of darkness. Myself and Mark were out. Um, doing a bit of filming for the upcoming carp divers and there was a few fish topping so what I've done is come up today with the dead bait rods and hoping that there's a pike or two just on the shoals. When we get into January and February the baits that I use for me piking when I'm dead baiting do change a bit. I've always got ultimate confidence in the smelt but I start moving towards baits like today I'm going to be using a bluey um, baits that are a lot more fatty and have got a lot more, you know, to give back. You know, if, the, if a, a pike's coming up to spawn in, a female, she wants to be, um, you know, picking up meals that are going to give her as much nutrition as possible for the least amount of effort. So my baits do go slightly bigger and I do go more towards smelly, um, high fat oil content baits. Just hoping that, that if that better girl's about, it'll pick her up. The rig for the session is my simple dead bait pencil rig. I've got a fox stop on the line, two beads, a mark out and float, an 18 gram stubby sinker, and then one of my 18 inch wire traces down to the bait. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pace a bait down the edge because there's a half clarity in the water today, so I think the pipe might move closer in. And then there's a few features in the area that I'm going to put a bait close up to. And hopefully, them fish that I've seen topping in the week, there'll be a pike sitting off them looking for the meal. Right, so doing the vlog, I don't think I've ever jumped to midway in a session so quick. Um, this morning, summed up quickly, the silvers started topping and there was quite a few silvers in the area. And about two hours into the session, about 10 o'clock, the water started erupting and the swirls from pike all up and down the stretch. Uh, the dead bait floats remained still and they just didn't move. At one point, there was a swirl next to me float and that dead bait could have only been, what, five foot away from the pike? They're just not interested, so... I'm going to have to make a change and sometimes in your pike and this works um, what you have to think with the pike is the pike are looking for dead baits at points sometimes today they're lying on the bottom and they're looking up so they're looking up and actively hunting so then they're using the sight and they're looking for fish going past them in ambush so I'm going to make a slight change today we've got the wind for it because we've got a wind that's going to just drift the bait down so we'll have a look at the rig that I'm going to change over to and hopefully we might pick up a pike. Right, so let's have a look at the rig that I'm going to change over to for the afternoon. It's a fox um, stop knot on the line, two beads to aid separation. It's a 35 gram high vis dart, 25 gram weight and then my normal wire trace going down. Right, so the bait that I'm going to use for the session is a roach and I'm going to mount it differently. Now normally you'd put the hooks along the side of the bait like that. But today I'm going to be putting one of the hooks in the back of the fish and the other hook just in its flank like that. So it'll mean like that. So it'll mean that the fish will sit naturally in the water and what I'm hoping is it's going to drift over the top of a pike's head and it's going to, you know, ambush it and take it. That's the theory. 
Right, so that's the rig, and one thing that I do want to cover here is I do quite a lot of fishing, as you probably see on the channel, and this scenario at this time of year is not uncommon um, for the pike to have a sudden change from picking up deads to actively hunting. And I'm quite confident, I've done this tactic before, and I'm quite confident that it's going to work and we're going to pick up a fish. Sometimes it can be quite quickly, because the pike are actively looking up for bait. So I'm going to fish it mid-depth, so any pike line on the bottom, if it goes over the top of its head, it's going to shoot out and get it. So let's see if it works. So the good thing about the vein on the float, as you can see there, keeping the camera still, it's just drifting the bait through the swim and covering the water for you and helping that bait cover as much area as you possibly can. And what you're hoping for is for that bait to go over the fish's head. Do you have a very good float when you haven't got a really bad wind? When you have quite a quite a substantial wind, it can be too good at catching the wind and they, they pull through too quickly. But when you've just got a gentle breeze like today, it's just drifting nicely through the swim. Right, so a little bit on unhooking the pike, as always, forceps, pliers, and your bolt cutters. Three essentials that you need. Obviously, you shouldn't be going out piking if you haven't got them really. And an unhooking mat that's wetted down. So let's get this pike out and get it unhooked. Right, so just a bit on unhooking the pike. Put the pike on its back. Bring it back towards you. This hook here is the one that's hooked the pike. And I would imagine it's the one with the barbing. Get that one out first. And the other one, I think, is just loose. And there we go. Both hooks out the pike. A quick look at it. It's been eating well, you can see here. So we'll get it in the edge to rest. And we'll get a block done. Right, so there's that pike, just over six and a half pound. And as you can see, the profile of the pike is a lot different than the ones earlier on in the year. You can see just on the bottom bit of its stomach there, a lot fuller and preparing for spawning. So just over six and a half pound. Right, so seconds after releasing that pike, put the float back out and it's gone again. And it just shows the, you know, the different hunting styles of the pike. These pike have been around all day, all morning, and we've not had a tap. And um, within 10 minutes, we've had two fish. Pike resting in the net there. Just about to be blogged, pop the float back out, and it's gone again. A morning spent without a bite, and then two takes and three pike in about 15 minutes. So, quick bit on unhooking the pike, hand under its gill, bring your mouth towards you, and that hook was loose, and this hook here barely in and that is the fine lines of piking as I say you can see there for anyone that's new you got a lot of area to work with quite a lot of area in its mouth be careful with its teeth because that's what it uses to feed your hand through its gills there and you're on this soft bony bit here there's no teeth there at all so you can't get bit pike number two about four to five pound 
and pipe number three is waiting in the net and it just shows the piker there like I said you've just got to match their feeding habits on the day right so there's pipe number three in tip top condition probably getting ready to spawn next month or the month after we have quite a mild winter this year so spawning probably will come early and that's why these fish are in such condition eight and a half just over eight and a half pound let's get it back so these guys fully vested let's let them go right so it's been about two hours without a bite now um frantic action for about 15 20 minutes and then really quiet um, and that's how piking can be sometimes but hopefully this blog you know shows that you know the pike most of the time are there um times when we blank and times when we don't get a bite then pike are still there and they're still in the area they're just not interested in picking up dead baits whether they're wary of them or whether it's because they're they're actively hunting by a different way but you know don't doubt that they're not there um they'll be there all right and they'll be around the baits probably looking at the baits and just not picking them up i'm proper made up today that that little change has worked and it'll come together nicely as a blog and it just shows that you know sometimes just making them little changes can have drastic you know um impact on your results so barring something happening in the next half an hour i'd like to wish you all tight lines and i'll catch you all next week